Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we'll be solving Cambridge IGCSE Chemistry Paper 2 Multiple Choice Extended 0620 Paper 2 to May June 2021. Guys, in this video we'll be solving from question number 21 to question number 40. This is a part 2 video, guys. And if you haven't seen the part 1 video, then I will put it in a playlist. Please watch it from there. Guys, moving to the question. Question number 21. Burning fossil fuels releases sulfur dioxide, which leads to acid rain. Which ion in the rainwater causes it to be acidic? Any solution becomes acidic due to the presence of H plus ion. So sulfate, oxide, hydroxide, a, H plus ion will be the correct answer. Question number 22. Which statement about the trends shown by the elements in periodic of periodic table of period 3 in the periodic table is not correct? Let's read the question. Which statement about the trends shown by the elements of period 3 in the periodic table is not correct? The elements become less metallic across the group. We know that in the periodic table, the left hand side we will get metals. As we go from metal towards the right hand side, we will get non metals. So, this is correct. All right. The group number increases across the period. Yes. As we go from group uh, one, all right, then we have group two. Across the period, we can see group number is increasing. So, this is not. This will not be the answer. The number of electrons shells across the period. All right. So we know across the period, let's say if we are in period three. All right. If we are in period three, every element will have three shells. So number of shells does not increase. The same question says the number of electron shells increases across the period. Since this is not correct, the question says we have to find the statement which is not correct. So this will be our answer. 22C. Guys, let's see the point D. The number of outer electrons increases across the period. Guys, as the group number increases across the period, obviously the number of outer electrons is also going to increase across the period. Guys, question number 23. The diagram shows the position of element E, F, G and H in the periodic table. We can see E and F, we can see G and H. Which statement about E, F, G and H are correct? All right. Now, the first statement says that E has a higher density than F. Guys, we know that down the group in group 1, density increases. Density increases. All right. And melting point decreases. So keeping that in mind, E has a higher density than F. This will be a wrong statement. All right. E has a higher melting point than F, which is correct because we can see that a melting point decreases down the group. So E will have a higher melting point than F. So two is correct. If one is wrong, A and B options are canceled out. Okay. Now G has a darker color than H. We know that the color of group 7, the color of group 7 goes darker down the group. Goes darker down the group. So G has a darker color than H. 3 will be wrong. When 3 is wrong, then C is cancelled and thereby D will be the correct answer. G has a lower melting point than H. So 2 and 4 correct. Question number 23, D is the correct answer. Guys, moving to question number 24. When aqueous iodine is added to a solution of vanadium V2 plus and the V2 plus ions each lose one electron, which property of transition element is shown by this? Reaction. Let's reread the question. An aqueous solution of iodine is added to a solution of vanadium 2 plus. The V2 plus ion 
each lose one electron. So V2 plus ion loses one electron, turns into V3 plus ion and gives a one electron. Okay, now the question says, transition elements have variable oxidation state. Which property of transition element is shown by this reaction? Yes, transition element does have variable oxidation state. So this is a correct statement. Next, transition elements form a plus one stable ion. Well, this is not correct. Transition element can form other stable ions as well. Transition elements are oxidizing agents. All right, uh, it is not proven the transition elements are all oxidizing agents. Metal are typically, they're going to lose electron. So they're reducing agents. All right, transition elements can act as catalyst. Well, this statement, the experiment that we are doing from here does not say that this is a catalyst. So A is the correct answer. Guys, question number 25. A piece of aluminium is dropped into dilute hydrochloric acid. Okay, so aluminium is dropped into dilute hydrochloric acid. We're supposed to see a reaction. But there was no immediate reaction is observed. Which statement explained th this observation? Guys, aluminium, when manufactured, they develop a aluminium oxide coating, Al2O3, which is a protective coating. This is a protective coating protective coating and this coating does not react with uh, you know dilute acids and it is you know it is safe from dilute acids it is safe from air and water so the question says aluminium does not neutralize acid no aluminium can neutralize acid it can react with acid to produce salt and hydrogen aluminium is a non-metal aluminium is a metal so this is wrong Aluminium is below hydrogen in the reactivity cities. We know that aluminium is very high up in the reactivity cities, way above from hydrogen. So this is also wrong. Finally, guys, aluminium is covered in an unreactive oxide layer. D is the correct answer. Guys, moving to question number 26. Some metal nitrates and carbonates decompose when heated strongly. Metal Q has a nitrate that decomposes to give a salt, a colorless gas only. The carbonate of metal Q does not decompose when heated with Bunsen burner. What is metal Q? Guys, this is a very interesting question. We know that specifically group one metal nitrate, group one metal nitrate, example, sodium nitrate or potassium nitrate, sodium nitrate or potassium nitrate when they are strongly heated then they turn into sodium nitrite and give off oxygen which is a colorless gas but their carbonates are so stable that even if we heat it there will be no reaction they will just simply melt but they will not do any kind of reaction so Sodium or potassium was an example. Then now calcium, definitely not. Copper, no. Zinc, not. C is the correct answer, guys. Question number 26, C. Question number 27. Aluminium is extracted from its ore by electrolysis. Which equation represents the reaction that occurs at the anode during electrolysis? Guys, anode is positive electrode. Anode will attract anions. So A and B are wrong because they are cations. So anode will attract anions, which is oxide. Now, in the case of oxide, we know that it turns into O2 and gives off electron. So to form oxide, from oxide to O2, it must have two O2 minus. And then that will give a four electron. So C is the correct answer. Guys, question number 27, C. Question number 28. Mild steel consists of mostly iron. Mild steel can be prevented from rusting by a process called galvanizing. Copper is not a very strong metal. However, if it is mixed with a suitable metal, a strong alloy called brass is produced. So guys, for galvanizing, we use zinc. And when we want to produce brass, we must also add zinc with copper. The question says, which statement is correct? Copper corrodes very quickly. Guys, Copper is a very unreactive metal. It is below hydrogen in the reactivity series. So it does not corrode quickly. Copper is mixed with zinc to produce brass. This is a correct statement. All right. Next, galvanizing mild steel changes it from uh, a pure metal into an alloy. No, galvanizing is just like painting. Uh, it's like a coating. So it doesn't convert it into an alloy. When a steel object is galvanized, this means it is coated with a thin layer of tin. Well, galvanizing means coating with a thin layer of zinc. So 
B is the correct statement. Question number 28, B. Copper is mixed with zinc to produce brass. Question number 29. Water is used for the irrigation of crops and for drinking water. For which uses must water be chlorinated? So for irrigation, it, the water does not need to be uh, in a super pure. It can have bacteria in it and that's going to be fine. So for irrigation, we do not need to chl chlorinate it. All right. So these things are going to be wrong. But for drinking, definitely chlorination is important. So question number 29, C is the correct answer, guys. Guys, moving to question number 30. Which natural resource cannot provide a raw material for the manufacture of ammonia? Okay, guys, for the manufacture of ammonia, all right, we know that for producing ammonia, we require nitrogen and we require hydrogen. Now, we get nitrogen from air. So definitely we need it. We get hydrogen from petroleum. We can also get hydrogen from uh, water. So limestone, all right, which is calcium carbonate, does not contain any of the required component of ammonia. So B will be the correct answer. Limestone cannot provide any raw material for the manufacture of ammonia. Question number 31. Ammonia is made in the Haber process. Which condition are used in the Haber process? Guys, for this particular process, we just have to keep it memorized. Haber process uses 450 degrees Celsius, 200 atmospheric pressure, and iron as a catalyst, guys. Just keep it memorized because it's going to be important. It's always repeated. The same question is given all the time. So just, guys, keep that in mind. Question number 32. Which process in the carbon cycle is responsible for removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? Guys, removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is done by tree, which is done in the process of photosynthesis. In the process of photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is reacted with water to produce glucose and oxygen. So photosynthesis will be the correct answer. Guys, combustion, decomposition, and respiration all adds up carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Question number 33. The equation represents two reactions, P and Q, of lime calcium oxide. When calcium oxide is reacted with silicon dioxide, it produces calcium silicate. When calcium oxide is reacted with sulfur dioxide, it produces calcium sulfite. In which process do the reaction occur? So guys, in the extraction of iron, we know that calcium oxide reacts with silicon dioxide. All right. So extraction of iron, P will definitely be there. All right. And uh, sulfur dioxide being neutralized with calcium oxide, it is done in the process of flue gas desulfuration. So B will be the correct answer, guys. Guys, this question also is very repetitive. Please remember that calcium oxide reacting with sulfur dioxide is flue gas desulfuration and calcium oxide reacting with silicon dioxide. This is done in extraction of iron. Just keep that in mind. Keep it memorized and it will always score the mark. Question number 34. Which statement about ethanol is correct? Is not correct. Sorry, my bad. Is not correct. Okay, ethanol can be made by fermentation. Yes, ethanol can be made by fermentation. This is correct, meaning for this particular answer will be, uh, you know, wrong. All right, ethanol is oxidized to make ethanoic acid. It, this is a correct statement, so wrong. Ethanol reacts with oxygen exothermically, making it a good fuel. Yes, this is correct, so thereby wrong. Ethanol reacts with propanoic acid to make propyl ethanoate. Guys, if we react ethanol with propanoic acid, we will get ethyl propanoate. All right. Now you might be thinking, how can I do it so fast? You see, it's very easy. Whenever we have the alcohol group, guys, consider the alcohol group as the alkyl group and the acid group as ATE. So we had propanoic acid, so we have propanoate. So D will be the correct answer. Guys, which pair of formula represents two alkanes? We know that alkanes have a general formula CnH2n plus 2. So anyone that matches that will be the, uh, you know, uh, represents two alkane. Now, uh, we can see, uh, you know, whenever we have CH4 and CH18, these two are meeting up with the formula CnH2n plus 2. All right, we have one carbon. So CH2 into 2, all right. Uh, uh, plus two, uh, sorry, one into two plus two, which is CH4. All right. And for C8, it will be two, uh, it will be eight into two plus two, 
which is equals to C8H18. So guys, 35A is the correct answer. Which statement about alkanes is correct? They burn in oxygen. All right. Yes, we know that uh, alkanes burn in oxygen. This is a correct statement. Now, the question says they contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. We know that alkanes are hydrocarbons. They do not contain oxygen. They contain double bonds. Alkanes do not contain carbon-carbon double bonds, so thereby this is wrong. They contain ionic bonds. Alkanes are organic compounds formed by covalent bonds, so they do not contain any ionic bonds. Guys, 36A is the correct answer. Question number 37. Which statements about ethanoic acid are correct? It is a strong acid. Guys, number one is wrong because ethanoic acid is not a strong acid. Now, this particular question is very fun to solve because if one is wrong, you can see the only option is C. So let's see why it is correct. The ethanol reacts with air to, uh, it, it reacts with ethanol to form an ester. Yes, ethanoic acid can react with an alcohol to form an ester. This is a correct statement. All right. It has the formula CH3COOH. This is also a correct statement. So guys, two and three are correct. Question number 38. The flow chart shows how petroleum may be turned into a plastic. So petroleum process one turns it into saturated hydrocarbon. Process two turns it into unsaturated hydrocarbon. And process three turns it into a plastic. Now, what are the processes? One, two, three. So if we have a large alkene, all right? So from petroleum, uh, you know, from petroleum contains a mixture of, um, you know, uh, hydrocarbons. So for, by the process one, we get saturated hydrocarbons. So process one will be fractional distillation. All right, process one definitely has to be fractional distillation. And in that way, we get saturated hydrocarbon. All right, and then in process two, to get unsaturated hydrocarbon, we must definitely do cracking. All right, and from unsaturated hydrocarbon, if you want plastic, we must do polymerization. So guys, for question number uh, 38, process two will be cracking and process three will be polymerization. Guys, C will be the correct answer. Question number 39, the structure of a synthetic polymer is shown. We can see CO and NH, CO, NH, all right? So whenever we have a dicarboxylic acid, which is bonded with diamine, all right, we can definitely say that uh, this is a synthetic polymer. All right, okay, definitely it's a synthetic polymer, also mentioned in the question. All right, now the question says the structure shows that it is a dash. All right, it is a polyamide because we have amide linkages. Guys, because we have amide linkages, so it is a polyamide. It is not a polyester. And it is formed by, definitely it is formed by a condensation reaction. All right, because when the CONH bond formed, it released a water molecule. So for question number 39, B will be the correct answer. Guys, the last question, which substance is a natural polymer? Guys, ethene is not even a polymer. Terylene is a synthetic polyester. This is a polyester and it is synthetic. Nylon is a polyamide. And this is also synthetic. Only protein is a natural polymer. Guys, thank you for watching the video. If you like videos like this, then subscribe to the channel. And keep watching the video until the end. All right, wish you best of luck with your exam. Bye-bye.